I'm Ursula Odom, and I am going to be talking about Mary McLeod Bethune today and the United Nations. Have you ever wondered why she was there or even what the United Nations really is? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about today. I portray Mary, Mary McLeod Bethune as a in-person, one-person show. And in doing so, there are a lot of things that I share with individuals that are only scratching the surface because when I say that she was the only black woman to be at the United Nations charter signing in an official capacity, that's a fact, but why? What happened? That's what we're gonna talk about today. So what is the United Nations? Well, after World War I, they didn't like that so much. So President Woodrow Wilson decided that he was going to create a League of Nations to stop all wars. Well, that failed because we had World War II. And after World War II, which was so devastating, and so many people died, that President Roosevelt decided that it was a good idea and he was going to try that again. And he created a conference of United Nations. And it was a military alliance to prevent or stop wars quickly. That, that was what they wanted to do. And as I look back over it, trying to figure out what was going on with the United Nations over the history of time, I realized that in 1945, until this point in time, they've had 31 people who've been listed as ambassador. Now, Dr. Bethune was not an ambassador. I don't want to misunderstand that. But of the people that were appointed as ambassadors, there were 31 of them to this point, not counting the acting ambassadors. And when I look at those names, I, I see names like Henry Cabot Lodge, Adley Stevenson, George H. W. Bush, Jean Kilpatrick, Madeleine Albright, Samantha Powell, Nikki Haley. And when I look at that, I said, okay, so when was the first black person appointed? Number 14 out of 31 was Andrew Young, 1977. I remember that. Then there was Donald McHenry and number 19, Edward Perkins. Now look at the number or think about the number because number 14 was the first black, na black man. Number 15 was the second black man and then we had a white woman. Number 16, that was Jean, Pil Kilpa Jean Kilpatrick. So when did we have our first black woman? Number 27, that was Susan Rice in 2009. And now we have number 31 is a black woman, Linda Thomas Greenfield. We'll come back to her because there's some interesting things that connect from then until now. So Dr. Bethune was appointed by the State Department as an official associate consultant to the American delegation to the conference that convened in 1945 to set the rules for what the United Nations would become. There were 55 nations that attended. And according to Dr. Bethune's papers, the attraction, the attention was endless. Everybody wanted to know what was happening there. Locals, nationals, internationals, Everybody wanted to know, and she was absolutely thrilled at all races of, of mankind, except the American Indian were represented. That's a conversation for another time. She was pleased at the fact that the surroundings had a lot of pump and circumstance in that they held the meetings, at least the, the general sessions, in the opera house in San Francisco. And apparently it was well appointed and um, decorated in a way that would be quite memorable. 
And she said there were 3,000 people, men and women, delegates, officials, consultants, experts, observers, and just plain folks. And they came together to create the structure to provide the machinery which will make future peace not only possible, but certain. So in a document in June 1945, she talked about some of her experiences and, and um, what took place and what they were supposed to do. So I'm about to tell you what they did as a consultant or an associate consultant and the consultant to the conference. So one of the things that she said was that they were representing, representing 42 national organizations of labor, industrial, agricultural, educational, church, and other responsible bodies made that group. And what they did is that they held meetings. That's no surprise, right? Okay, they held meetings with delegates and technical experts on the key issues of the time. And she also remarked that at some point, the people of the darker races got together, separate from everybody else. Now, I can only wonder and hope that somebody recorded that information and can make it available because that's where the real issues probably were. <laughs> what they did was advise through discussion. They would talk about things back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then advise based on the results of those discussions. They made recommendations as ideas and they made recommendations as principles to the American delegation for the charter. She herself represented the NAACP and she was joined as a, a fellow associate consultant with W.E.D. Du Bois. And the consultant was Walter White. So they fed him the information and then he worked with uh, writing the charter or advising the people that were writing the charter. She um, says that she voiced the hopes and aspirations of Negro people. She advocated the abolition of colonization. So that's, that in itself says that, okay, being at the, the League of Nations, I'm sorry, the um, United Nations says that she had a worldwide impact. But the fact that she was focused on, on decolonization or not colonizing at the time was also impacting the lives of people all over the nation, okay, and international, all over the world. She was working on an international bill of rights. And of course, she advocated for educational and cultural programs. Now, fast forward to today. There's an issue today that sounds very familiar. Now, what I'm about to read to you, what she wrote in 1945. She wrote, the conference is a great challenge to America. She must be a great deal. Okay. The conference is a great challenge to America. She must do a great deal of house cleaning, cleaning in her treatment of the Negro. If she can ever hope to hold her rightful place among the leadership of the nations of the world. The reason I say fast forward is because if you have been watching the news anytime recently, you know that our current ambassador, Linda Thomas Greenfield, 2021, is dealing with exactly the same issue. Now in the description below, you will find links to YouTube um, videos that will tell you about what the nation, the United Nations really is. There are some great ones out there. I'm not going into great detail about that process, but I have a link for you to, to visit that and see how some other people describe it. There's also a link where they are showing the video of the actual ceremony where the signing took place. And, and seeing that, um, it's just wonderful in itself knowing that she was there in that audience, in the, in the midst of all of this history. But again, back to um, Ambassador Thomas Greenfield, 
of today, she was in the news because of uh, her recent appointment, but one of her speeches at the United Nations caught the attention of China. And they challenged her for speaking what they considered ill of them and their humanitarian ways due to what was going on in America and the protests against um, what is happening with African-Americans and p police brutality and Black Lives Matter and what have you. Because she, she spoke about her, her experience as a Black person in America. So it's, it's old being made new. And I say it that way because at Sula too, that's our motto. I am Ursula Odom, CEO of Sula Two, and we make old, new, and everything we do in that we capture, preserve, and present legacy information and present it back to you in a new way. So when I say Dr. Bethune was here, she was present, she made a difference that lasts to this day. Then I go back to saying, why was she there? Hmm. To offer her opinion, to, to offer her advice, her knowledge, and her influence. How did she get there? Ah, now that's an interesting thing. Because when President Roosevelt declared that the conference would take place, he died before it actually did. And she spoke at his funeral. And President Wilson, I think it is, <laughs> the current president, um, then saw that she had a position of influence because it wasn't a large gathering to eulogize President Roosevelt. But she was there and she spoke. And they realized that this indeed was without question a woman of influence, a black woman speaking at the president's funeral and being given a cane by the president's widow to symbolize how important she was to that administration and to that family earned her a spot as an official Black woman at the first conference to form the United Nations and to put the words in a charter that would govern to this day. Again, I'm Ursula Odom, and what I'm going to be doing as the person that portrayed Mary McLeod Bethune for various organizations and um, events, I often talk about what she does. But these Tuesday morning live recordings will go a little bit deeper, or at least ask the question that you might go a little deeper with. Ask why was she there? And if you had the documentation to prove it, wouldn't that be special? It exists, it's among her papers, and it's among books that are written, of which I have links, as I mentioned, in the description that will help you understand what the United Nations is, um, books about Dr. about Dr. Bethune, and some things that I do as well. So come back next Tuesday. Take care.